I, I was grateful for the acknowledgement that the government does take parish councils, local councils, town and parish councils, uh, very seriously. Uh, and this is an opportunity for me uh, to say uh, how much we acknowledge the outstanding work that local councils all over the country perform. Uh, and I want to particularly sort of uh, recognise the professionalism that you've shown during what's a pretty difficult and a testing time uh, for government at all levels. You talk about the big society. Well, you are very much in the front line of the big society. The big society is accepting uh, that the state is there to help people, uh, but it's not there to dictate to people. It's about giving communities, individuals, families, voluntary groups, charitable groups, councils, the ability uh, to come together to do things uh, which uh, work for their community. Uh, and you, as, uh, as local councils, are absolutely the closest to the ground uh, in that regard. It seems to me the old planning system was a classic case of where we had got over-centralisation wrong. You know, it was driven by targets. Very often uh, people felt that local voices were ignored and it very often didn't bear much relation to reality. Uh, you had uh, these long convoluted systems of getting regional strategies which had lots of targets in them, for example, for housing, which didn't bear any relation to delivery on the ground. It just didn't work at the end of the day. In you know, 2009, there were only 118,000 uh, new home completions. That's the lowest uh, level since 1946. Um, and, all right, it's been a bit of a recession, but the trend had been well below target right throughout the period that this rather prescriptive regime had been in place. So it just wasn't delivering on its basic purpose. And I think part of that is because it seems to us that the target culture actually cut people out of the equation and gave you a sense and a feeling all too often that planning and development wasn't, was, what was something that was done to people, done sort of over their heads and imposed upon them. Whereas in fact, because good planning and constructive and go-ahead development can change societies and communities for the better, it should be something which is done with people uh, and for them. So that's what we're seeking uh, to rebalance. Uh, and the neighbourhood plans are part of changing all that. So the regional strategies go and the, uh, and the constraints that they had. There's still a place, obviously, for larger scale planning, uh, and, and we're putting that in place uh, with, uh, with our proposals. But overwhelmingly, <coughs> communities should be able to uh, take the lead in deciding how growth takes place on their doorstep, what growth is appropriate, and where. Uh, and not only do uh, communities have the ability uh, to uh, shape uh, their own uh, futures in that way, they also share uh, the reward. The new homes bonus that we're going to uh, give is a good example of that. So is the community infrastructure levy, moving much more towards a tariffised system so that you can uh, share out the planning game in a, in a more sensible fashion than we have at the moment. Uh, and you as local councils are going to be centre stage in making those things happen. So, with a neighbourhood plan, if a neighbourhood plan is approved by a simple majority in a, in a referendum, a little local bowl, you're used to dealing with those sort of things in, the, in uh, the local council world, then the local authority has to respect it, unless there are some good strategic reasons why uh, the, 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 they can't quite accommodate it. Uh, and uh, as you know, uh, we want to give you, as well as that uh, planning uh, power, uh, an, another set of, of rights, uh, right for you to do things differently. You know, we've had the concept of earned autonomy. That was a good thing, it was a step in the right direction. But it was, if you like, of its time. And I think we now need to move beyond that. So, for example, the community right to build. That's going to empower local people to build without going through the rigmarole of the traditional style planning application. Uh, that will give them the right to build the homes and the shops and the facilities that they will want, so long as the scheme meets certain criteria. Uh, and provided it, again, has the support of the wider community in a referendum. But I think there's a real scope for local councils to be catalysts in taking those sort of ideas forward. You know, their involvement, your involvement, is going to be key in that. So, more power there. But I think there's also got to be more responsibility when you give somebody uh, more power. So, transparency uh, is key. Uh, and that's why the transparency agenda has to run right across the piece. Starts at central government and it has to run right the way down. Um, we've done our best by publishing at CLG um, all details of all expenditure in excess of £500. And we expect other councils, um, including yourselves, uh, 
right the way down the chain uh, to do the same. Creates a little bit more work perhaps initially, uh, but more and more councils, I know not everybody has a website, but most councils increasingly do. Uh, and actually when it's a fairly small amount of spend, it's not too difficult simply to put the detail uh, up there. But what it does is that's giving your residents, again, the ability to keep in touch with what's happening uh, and to challenge things if they think uh, things aren't being spent sensibly or, or properly. But we've said too that we will get rid of the standards board uh, because that regime uh, has become overly uh, complicated and far too many of the applications and references which went to the Standards Board actually related to parish councillors. And it seemed to me that sometimes that could be an inhibition uh, on uh, parish councillors uh, speaking honestly and fairly in debate, so we want that to go. If you want to keep uh, a voluntary code, that's entirely up to you, but we're not going to be uh, prescribing things. Uh, we're determined to get rid of the rules on predetermination. This is very important in planning applications, as you know. Um, where uh, at the moment those of you who serve on a planning authority as well as on the local council or where there's delegated functions in some cases, uh, if you speak out about a planning application you're not then allowed uh, to take part in the decision because you're held to have predetermined it. We think that's wrong. Uh, people should be able to say, uh, I think this is what we should be seeing in my village or in my town uh, without them being shut outside or of the door. So those are important things uh, about handing back uh, power to uh, uh, local uh, authorities and to the local level. So I hope you'll accept that there's actually a very ambitious agenda that this government is setting out right across the piece. The localism bill is a key part of it and that will deal with the primary legislation. At the same time, we've indicated that we are going to uh, go through a thoroughgoing review of the planning uh, law uh, and that we intend to do uh, commencing in the new year again, there will be a full consultation in the usual way on that, and what we envisage uh, is the creation of, of a much more rationalised and simplified set of national planning priorities. We go at the top, works very well in both Wales and Scotland, a similar sort of approach. That gives the context in which the bottom-up, the neighbourhood-driven planning approach can work. And so it gives you a context in which you can then <coughs> set the vision uh, that you have for your communities and then still has the important role of the local planning authority dealing with those planning applications but within the context of your vision that you have created uh, aligned to those national uh, parameters if you like which we don't want to be anything like uh, as intrusive uh, as the current uh, set. We had a look at uh, Greg Clark has actually got in his office all the planning documents which relate to his constituency uh, in Tunbridge Wells uh, in the South East Time we've added up the regional plan and the guidance, and that actually is something where I could almost hide behind it. There is a vast amount of paper there, and it's not necessary. So we can simplify a huge amount of that. That makes life easier for principal councils. It makes life uh, easier for local councils. So there are huge opportunities. There are some really tough challenges. I accept that. The whole of our team accepts that. Um, but local government and good public services aren't just a question of, of putting in resource. It's also a question of imagination about how the resource is used. And above all, it's about the genuine involvement of, of people uh, and their communities. And that's why I think NALC is hugely important. That's why I particularly wanted to come along today uh, and salute the work that NALC does uh, and the work that local councils do uh, up and down the country. It's a very important part of our localism agenda. So, more than happy to take some questions, of course, um, but uh, I'm very happy to, 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 to come along to the conference and wish you well, all your fellow members across the country well, uh, and the association and the organisation well, because it does a very important job. Thank you.